when I started the San Francisco Foundation, I had prior to that been the director of health where I served uh, the pleasure of a health commission that was appointed by um, the elected mayor in San Francisco. So that was really my first experience having a public uh, facing uh, responsibility to a publicly appointed board. Um, and that was, um, um, you know, it was an important experience mainly because it's in a public sphere uh, where most public companies uh, are in private spheres in terms of most of their deliberations. Um, and so you really think about accountability and transparency and clarity of communication uh, in a very deliberate and intentional way. And that was really my first experience. And then moving to the San Francisco Foundation, um, frankly, I just was incredibly blessed to have worked with very experienced community leaders and business leaders uh, who were the board of directors of the San Francisco Foundation. A very small board, a self-appointed board, uh, but one that uh, all of the board chairs that I worked with had tremendous experience both in the public space and in the private space. And really, uh, I learned a ton about governance from them. Well, I think, um, you know, all governing boards in the healthcare space uh, really have to look at um, uh, this pandemic from both the opportunities of risk, but also as the opportunity of disruption and opportunity. And I think a good governing board does a couple of things. One is, of course, uh, think about its fiduciary obligation, not from a a perspective of conserving resources, but rather at a moment of crisis such as this pandemic and its vast implications for communities throughout the country and really around the world, depending on where your company operates. It is a moment in time where one ought to think about where to double down, where to make additional investments. Um, yes, you wanna be mindful of uh, your endowment if you have one, uh, spending policy and those kinds of considerations. But it's much more important, I think, for boards of directors to think about what the opportunities, what the strengths of the organizations that they uh, oversee have and how to deploy those strengths at a time when there is so much disruption in healthcare. Um, the ACA, the California Healthcare Foundation was quite instrumental in its implementation in California. Uh, I would argue, um, the implementation in California was in some ways the lead train for the ACA. Um, you know, everything from regulations to implementation to policies. And it is a moment in time to really think about um, all the advantages and gains of the ACA. And frankly, from a CHCF point of view and our mission to make sure that all Californians receive uh, appropriate care, appropriate time. Um, this pandemic is really showing um, the weaknesses in our public health infrastructure. And so I think all healthcare institutions ought to be thinking about the fact that the U.S. spends 18% of its gross domestic product in healthcare. And when a pandemic broke out, we didn't have PPE for our frontline workers. There is something really fundamentally wrong with that situation. So whether you're a foundation, whether you're a, a healthcare delivery system, whether you're a health plan, uh, whether you're an allied healthcare professional, really thinking today about what we have learned from this pandemic is a very important aspect of governance. I think that um, the way I think about uh, serving in governance roles uh, is really threefold. Uh, one, believe in the company uh, believe in its, uh, its fundamental business model, uh, believe in uh, what it is you're trying to achieve. That's one. Two, um, I, I tell people, you know, it's very important that you both trust, respect, and enjoy working with other board members. And three, um, you know, many people come onto boards and they're the first person of color or they're the first woman or there, there may be first person who's identified as, as a gay or lesbian. 
Um, my view on that is that um, you ought to be who you are, um, be able to speak from your experience, all of them in its collective. Uh, none of us represent just one or another of these dimensions. And I think companies that recognize the power of diversity of its board are by definition companies that will do better. Um, that's true in uh, the for-profit sector. Uh, that's true in the not-for-profit sector. Um, it's just true that the more diverse board that you have, and not just on the face of it, but actually in content, in discussion, in opinion, in point of view, uh, those are boards that are fully engaged, take advantage of all board members' expertise in a useful way. And so I think about public service and governance from that perspective. Who are you working with? How important is that a company or entity? Um, and what opportunity do you have to influence it and to use your full voice and your full experience? Um, and if you're the only whatever woman or person of color on a board um, and somebody else joins the board, you know, make sure that you help them understand the culture of the board and make sure that their voice is, is fully heard and fully engaged. Um, so, um, you know, this, um, you know, legislating our way through it uh, is one approach. But I think really uh, the, the true advantage of, of a strength of a company or an organization or a foundation comes with the ability to bring and attract diverse points of view. And I think um, good business leaders, good CEOs and presidents understand the importance of that. And I think that's a movement and a train that will only grow with strength.